Oh, hello. Welcome to the 2013 Hyundai Challenge. Today we're going to be discussing From Russia with Love by Lawrence O'Donnell. So this is the third and final D.H. Lawrence book that I read this year, and my life for that matter. I also think it's the weakest. Um, it's the sequel to The Rainbow, um, which I talked about before. It wasn't great, but it had a really good sequence, at least a sequence that I enjoyed. Um, Sons and Lovers really kind of held my attention throughout. Um, this featured the same characters from The Rainbow of uh, Ursula and Gudrun um, Brangwen, uh, but I wasn't... I don't know. There, there wasn't really anything that really caught my attention and held on to it. Um, part of that could be that this is the first one that I listened to on audio. Uh, I'll level with you. If I hadn't listened to a lot of these books on audio, I don't think I would have made it through this challenge this year. Um, some books you lose a lot in translation, and some books it's just, just as riveting, if not more riveting. Uh, you know, Native Son was really harrowing. Um, the, uh, the Sun Also Rises really held my attention. So I don't feel like there's a whole lot of difference between audio and reading. Um, I do think maybe in some of these older-fashioned ones, like D.H. Lawrence is, you know, a little older than either of those two, um, maybe it's better to read them directly. I, I don't know. Uh, but basically, this follows up with uh, Gudrun and Ursula, and this is all about love um, and them falling in love. And a lot of it was about kind of this metaphor about animals and uh, how, like, animals uh, – and uh, I'm, I'm kind of butchering it, but – and I mean, you don't get the impression that this is what Lawrence felt. But this is what some of his characters were putting forward, which is that uh, you have to break the will of a horse the same way you have to break the will of a woman. And it's like the horse is there to be broken and the woman is there to be broken. And so there was a lot of like animal imagery and there was a, a lot of this was explicitly stated like this is my purpose or, you know, this is my underlying theme. And then there's a lot of animal imagery and then there's a lot of love imagery, and um, I think his point was that that's crap. It's c kind of a progressive idea, but maybe even for back then it wasn't that progressive to say, hey, don't beat your horses and don't beat your wives. Maybe that wasn't that big of a revelation. Um, uh, there were actually some parts that were poetical um that were like beautiful parts especially at the end i wish i could remember what the the part was but at, like at the very end he drops almost into verse it almost reminded me of i know this is a weird comparison but you know when you're reading dune by frank herbert there's times when it's almost like reading poetry rather than prose um and there were parts of this book that reminded me of that but on the whole uh, I didn't. It didn't really hold together as well, I thought, as uh, either of the other Lawrence books. So uh, not terrible, um, not super great, but uh, I'd say, hey, if you read Sons and Lovers and you really love his style and you really want to stick with it, uh, you know, maybe you could follow up with this one. Thanks for tuning in, and next time, if I complete this challenge, we'll be talking about... A Dance to the Music of Time by Anthony Powell. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sticking with me. Happy New Year. We'll see you next time, hopefully, if it happens.